Hello everyone, Jackson here for another exciting episode of Artist Interviews. And today we're sitting with Christopher Rivera of Invalid. How you doing today, Christopher? I'm good, man. It's good to be here and talk to you. I mean, it's it's great to have you on here. I can't wait to, to dive into these questions. And uh, right now it's like, I know things are kind of crazy and everything's kind of all over the place, but uh, it's, it's good to see you're doing well. Yeah, you know, the world is the way that it is, but I like that the people are still happy over here. Everybody, it's a tight knit community out over here where I'm at with my girlfriend right now. So there's plenty of things to do. People are, they still have their hopes up. There's plenty of things for me to do and I could still keep on being focused with music. Well, that's so great to hear. And um, I'm so glad that things are going well with the both of you. So today we're going to ask you a few questions um, and see where it goes. Are you ready to do this? Absolutely, man. I'm ready. What are your top three moments performing live? I'd say my first is when we played with Dostik. Um, I can't remember that. It was summer for sure. It was probably the most humid day in L.A., like ever it was insane it felt like arizona it felt like it was like a hundred something degrees it was so humid and nasty i felt so gross my throat was so dry i felt like i was sick or dying <laughs> i just remember feeling so anxious and i just scared that i was gonna totally just ruin it that night so i felt really bad for that show but I, everybody else had a great time. Uh, I hope so. But so, and then I'd say the second when we played at uh, Union downstairs, and I think I went a little too overboard for one of our songs, and I leapt out into the crowd and started running around and jumping into people and pushing people. I, I just got too excited. I couldn't help it. <laughs> I, I went back up on stage and I apologized to everybody. <laughs> I felt really embarrassed. <laughs> it was great. I don't really know of a, a third time ever since that. It's been, I felt pretty solid. But just two, just those two memorable moments, pretty much. That's great. Uh, thank you for those. I mean, I wasn't there for the one that you were, for when you were running around the crowd, but I'm sure that was freaking, freaking epic to see. <laughs> <laughs> but you know i know um when uh, you and i when we when our bands got to play together for that hosiko show like that was one of the one of the most when i first got to see you guys i thought oh my god these guys are freaking amazing i enjoyed it i thoroughly i thoroughly loved it and i remember standing there in the crowd going you know on the side of the stage going uh damn these guys have got it going on i mean this dude right here has got got it you know what i mean and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing Invalid the next time, you know, you guys are coming for a live show because I can't wait. It's, I'm pretty sure it's going to be epic. Once everything gets back to normal, I know it's going to be great. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I had, a whole, I had a good time. I had a really fun time with you that night. Uh, the Union show was God module, by the way, I just remembered. But I, I love all the shows that we do just because of the people that are there. That I get to talk to, that I get to meet all the artists, non-artists, fans, whatever. Just the fact that they're there and they're open to listen to us, to listen to me, act like a freak on stage is really comforting. And not to sound corny, but validating as well, you know, just to hear that, just to have that person there. They don't even know me. They don't have to listen to me, but still they gave me their time of day, which I really appreciate. It, it's so great and fulfilling, you know, when you have uh, those that you admire and uh, those that you respect, you know, who are in the audience, they're, you know, giving you, giving you that, you know, that attention and like really like paying attention to what you're doing and, 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 and feeding off that and you feeding off that energy that they're giving you. Absolutely. And to a lot of vocalists that I know that have personal problems and issues with public speaking or just being out and letting and being exposed to everybody, to strangers, and, and just to be there, to be under that glass being analyzed all the time, you know, to be judged, to let yourself be that person, to be judged like that. It takes a lot. It takes a lot of courage. But at the end of the day, I do care what people think. And, you know, I can't just have that 
egotistical sense of just being that big, huge, dominating person on stage that is just in control because I'm not. I'm human. I make mistakes. And it's, it's, it's good to hear that and to feel that from everybody else, from all the other amazing artists that I've seen, that I've worked with, that I look up to, just to know that, I mean, we're all still human at the end of the day. What would you say is your favorite album slash EP that you've worked on? I'm really excited for the, the latest album that we're working on. I did, however, have a really, it, I wouldn't say good or bad time working on the last EP just because of how important those songs were to me, but it was during a pretty crucial time for my life and for all the other band members in the group as well. <clears throat> Excuse me, but there's a lot of thought and a lot of emotion that goes into those songs and I might not be able to feel it when I'm making it, but later on when I do know it and it comes back to me like an epiphany, I could totally go through it again and understand it a little bit more. When you're going through the process of something, I feel it's hard for you to really understand it because you're acting and you're not analyzing. And when you have the chance to go back and look upon it, you start to have a clearer, better understanding of what you were going through potentially. And I find that very crucial. So it's, it's, it's fun, it's liberating, it's not, it's painful, it's torturous in some manner, it's catharsis, but it's important. And everybody needs to know that and to understand that, even if it sucks or not, you know, it's an emotion, it's a feeling, and we need that. It's important to us. It's that raw, it's that raw emotion, that raw feeling coming out from inside of you, and you're just pouring it all into, into your art. Um, I'm, I'm excited to hear it. I'm excited to, to, to get a taste of what you guys got coming out. So with the, with the process of working on the album, you know, like you were saying, like it's, it's there, you know, there's ups, there's downs, there's trials and tribulations, but with everything that you're working on, is there one thing that you're super excited about on this, on this new album? I'm excited for the ferocity behind how more tightly knit our structure has gotten along with our production skills uh, with mixer with mixing how i've gotten in the sound design the things that i've learned from my friends the people that have helped me from everybody else experience as a vocalist being able to, to push it harder and to to get people to get further deep inside and for me to show them how important and how impactful there's a lot of there's a lot of impact in this in this next album that's just more driving uh, at the same time there's the different focuses and the aspects of the music but all together just how tight it is just just a lot more tight knit the the sound and the structure is but for me a lot of it is uh this the, the sound design and um Pretty much all the, all the aspects, you know, because I, I, I can't help but just dive into everything. Everything has to just be analytical in that process of, of writing and structure and just, I, I, I just get too deep into it. And I want people to get into it, like really deep down into it. Yeah, you want them to experience that, that, that feeling that, like you were talking about that veracity of, you know, that feeling that you have inside that you feel yourself. So I, you know, that's very important, uh, especially if you want them to understand what you're trying to convey to them. So I'm, I'm excited, and I'm sure all of you guys out there are super excited about this. So I'm, have, have you announced the album yet? It's in the process. Uh, things, have, things have slowed down a little bit because of what's going on right now, but I'm, I'm still working on it. My boys are still working on it. We're still on it, but I would hope for maybe um, maybe winter, hopefully, hopefully around winter time for it to be released. I don't know, it's still up in the air, but I'm not going to accept an unfinished project or anything lesser than I feel what deserves, th this, this deserves to be, really. So I would rather it be perfect than just another thing to let slide, you know what I mean? So 
I'm hoping, end of this year. Well, you heard it right there, guys. Be sure to keep your ear to the ground. What was the drive behind getting you into making music and performing live? At the time of my upbringing, music-wise, I had spent a lot of focus into the genres that I felt had the most emotion poured into the music in itself, where you could really hear the person on the other end, even if you haven't exactly lived their life. They spoke to you in a manner in which you could compare experience to the to the to the kids that felt that they didn't have a voice, and those people spoke to them. I sought out every genre subgenre that was like that, and from there I felt was the heaviest, the hardest, the saddest, the darkest, going through all of those genres, and to eventually I felt comfortable with what I knew in my head and what I could apply to that and to a new generation that hadn't hadn't ever heard of this genre before. Because when I grew up, all the kids were into the, the, the emo phase, the screamo, the hardcore, all of that stuff, because we had things that we want to say. We, we, we had things that we wanted to do, but we felt like we were being misheard or mistreated. Some of us were abused. We've gone through all of that by ourselves. And we just had the music to ourselves as kid, as as kids, as that selective group of outcasts that we all just felt comfortable. Like we could beat the shit out of each other in that zone and still be friends. And I don't even know who you are. And that was the most liberating feeling to us. And I felt that with what I liked as music, that as, as that day and age, as a kid, the, the, the genre that I was really into, I felt that I could apply the heaviness and that aspect of the other side into the industrial genre, into the EDM genre, and kind of repackage it because I felt I could see that becoming a thing in the future. It's uh, like um, just coming out, like subgenre to subgenre, heaviness to heaviness, baselines to baselines, all that stuff. Just it kind of felt right to me. So that's what I worked on. And that was a very important thing for you, like trying, you know, helping to bridge the gap between an area that you love, you know, or, and, and the newer generation of, of people who had never been exposed to that. So I think that, I mean, that's, that's great. I mean, show, like introducing a whole entire new generation to something that you love and you cherish that sometimes you know, if, if, if we don't keep it alive, it may fall by the wayside or it may get lost. So I think that that's very important. So thank you for that. Thank you for, for, for keeping that alive and, and being able to show that to, to, uh, to a new generation of people. And your music speaks to that. Because I know uh, when, I, when I hear it, it's very, like I said, it's very um, hard. You know what I mean? It's very hard and it's very real. It's very... It's, and it's also very fluid too. And it's like, when you hear it live and you're there at the show, you kind of like go, it doesn't matter if you're a fan of what's being, what's being played new or it's a fan of what's being played old, it seems to bridge that, that generational gap. And I think that's, that, that right there is very, very important. And I think you guys have accomplished that. I, I hope so. I, I, I really want to, in the future, present, whatever. I really want to strive for that to make it more open and acceptable for any ear, untrained or not, to be able to hear this music and understand what industrial is, what everything else is, all that other hardcore stuff, but still just feel that, feel that, that feeling that everybody does mutually, whether it's techno or country, whatever, you know, it's just that, that feeling that I could really appreciate this song or I get it. I, I get what they're saying. Or I just want to fucking dance. I just want to be myself. And, and I want that. I want people to feel open and acceptable because it, it's, it's not right to, to have that subgenre all to yourself and then just keep it away from a whole generation. And then instead of helping them out, just laugh at them and not help them strive to, to be better, to make themselves better, you know? That's very important. And that rings very true to everybody out there, I'm sure. Um, and I'm sure there are, there are other artists and a lot of, you know, 
uh, a lot of other musicians who feel that same way, who are trying to convey that same message. What are you looking forward to accomplishing the most moving forward? First thing on my mind is a music video. I just want a music video that has that industrial feel, that vibe, so you can look at it and hear it and just experience it like you're like you're in wax tracks so you're in the 80s you're in the 90s you're in that that era of music i just really want to to have that that's it i could die tomorrow but if i haven't done that then i wasted my life <laughs> i just think that would be so perfect just to embody the sound to embody the image and everything just so just to cap it off that's it i i I, of course, I want to work with, with more artists like yourself, like everybody, like it doesn't matter, friends or non-friends, I don't care. I just, I, I love the music, I appreciate it, and I can't stop doing it, and I won't. <laughs> so <laughs> I just want to work with everybody and anybody and just keep doing music and keep making people happy if they're happy with what I'm doing. Well, I'm excited. I, I would definitely love to a music video from you guys you know what i mean i would love to see that you know and you capturing that um like you were talking about the wax tracks you know like that, that kind of era like capturing that that raw feeling you know once we start settling into that new normal i'm gonna be right there waiting for that video to get filmed you know that because you know you can kind of see little things in your head like just from seeing you guys live i can kind of see these little ideas in my head from what what you're what you're talking about so I'm sure it's going to be amazing. So, it, hey, do you have anybody in mind that you would like, that you would love to work with as a music video director? Somebody that understands that genre. So they'd probably be like 35, 40 plus, you know, somebody who's, who's really lived it. But I really do like that a lot of the younger generation kids in the music industry, they're getting that vibe. They're getting that feel, that just grungy, VHS home video type style feel just because it's so under processed I feel it has more substance to it than a than a high different like a super high definition quality like you're making a movie like it's so cold I, I feel like it's just scripted rather than just a, a free open project like a like a snuff film or something like that just very mm -hmm. dirty and gritty and just like like a punk like a punk vibe just because of how DIY it is and just how I could, I could appreciate the substance in what is there as opposed to the quality of the track or the, or the visual or, you know, how crisp and how, how nice everybody looks with their, with their makeup and all their effects and stuff like that. You know, I'd rather just have it be simple, sim simple in a way to which anybody could really see it and understand it, you know, but I don't know. I don't know. Uh, a, a video is a video, I suppose, and it's really not my line of work, so I'd rather just leave it up to the professional, but I know the stuff that I like. <laughs> and it's your vision. It's your vision. It's what you want to convey. So DIY, crunchy, tracking adjust, VHS, you know what I mean? Throwback. I, I like it. I'm all about it. I'm uh, I can't wait. It's going to be great. What positive message would you give your fans out there? I would like everybody to know that in this world, if you feel you have a defining factor or quality at all, or not, you do. Because in a world of, or a universe, I'm sorry, of limitless possibilities, there is still that variable that is always going to be different, like yourself. I may not think the way that you do. We may not agree on certain things, but out of everything, there's more than a hundred, I'm sure, that we agree on. So in this vast world, and if you feel somehow inferior, or if you feel like you're lacking in certain areas, then that must mean that you are better in other areas and other people. You may not think it's so significant, but it's something. And in that world of balance, where there is dark, there is light, because if not, then we wouldn't, I feel like we wouldn't really be alive, that there, there would be nothing, 
worth living for. If, if we were all perfect, if we all understood the same thing, if we all believed the same thing, I, I, I feel that just the, the, the world or the universe would be so stagnant that it would just be, I don't know, I, I, I couldn't even comprehend that. But I just, I, I appreciate the impurities and I feel that everybody else should too, because that's what truly makes us unique and also human at the same time. Those are some very wise words. And everybody out there, take that in. You know, just because one thing that you may not excel at doesn't mean that you're going to, doesn't mean that you're going to be bad at everything. One area, if, you, if you're not doing well in one area, it doesn't mean that you're not going to do well in someplace else, that you can excel someplace else. And art, that is very important. Like, whatever medium of art you choose to convey, doesn't matter if it's writing or, or, or songwriting or, um, you know, being a musician or what, whatever it is, it's all going to come out in some different way, just like it's come out with you. You know, you, you come out and you excel at, at uh, creating your music and really like pushing your art. So I think everybody out there can take notes from this, that it is very important for you to, do what, do what you feel inside and, and try to make it the best that it can be, you know, in whatever way you choose. Absolutely. Thank absolutely. you. Yeah. And, and you know, it's, it's, it's also, if I, you, you may think you're the best at something and somebody else thinks you're terrible. Sometimes I think I'm a terrible vocalist. Some people really like it. Some people hate it, but it's because of that. Everybody will always think something different, you know, and I, I appreciate that rather than just a solid agreement on everything and no constructive criticism at all because I would rather hear that than just a blatant lie all the time. Well, thank you for that. Thank you again for taking this time to sit with us today, Christopher. Thank you to everybody for taking this time to tune in and watch us have this conversation. Be sure to like and subscribe to our Tour Fiend page because we have more interviews on the way. Thank you so much again, Christopher, and we can't wait to see you again when the, everything gets back to normal and i'm so again i'm so glad that you guys are doing well thank you so much for having me man it was a pleasure talking to you